one is you guys. You are all with us in some shape or form. So with me here I have Lara. Um, down there somewhere is Big Fat Dominic. From you with me. Hi. And just out a minute ago was Hanno's, that's Lara, that's Hanno's pup. Um, and then over there we've got Bailey, the mum, um, and little Oakley. He was born, both pups were born last year. It's Hanno's birthday tomorrow, he'll be one, and then Oakley's going to be one on the 23rd of June. Generally they're all born around June. Um, I'm just going to give you a bit of a heads up before we crack on. This may be a short and sweet demo, uh, we may have to condense it. Basically all we're going to do is go with what little fat Dominic here wants to do, because the two girlies, you may notice, they're looking a little porky. They're basically, they're due to pop out their pups any day now. They are um, very heavily pregnant. We thought Bailey was going to give birth uh, a couple of days ago. We thought Lara was about to give birth yesterday. So it's very much just a case of letting them do exactly what they want to do. Um, and working with this little boy right here. So Dominic, he's the bull of the group. He's the big male. They're known as bulls or beach masters. Hello, Hanno. Hanno is just a little ball in front right now. So Hanno has started training. Um, he doesn't take milk from his mum anymore, Oakley does, as you can see over there. Um, so now he looks to, to us for fish. So he's in very kind of early stages of training, just doing target training with him. Um, and Dominic's job around this time of year is to do nothing, basically. He totally and absolutely falls in love with the girls, don't we? They're over there looking all beautiful, aren't they? And it means when he's in love, he can't think of much else, can we, buddy? So if we get anything out of him, just be glad. It'll be a really miracle, won't it? Now, during this breeding season, the males try and make themselves as fat as possible all year for this moment. That's what makes long the size of he is. Big fat boy. And we're very loud during the breeding season. Pretty much from sunrise to sunset, you get males barking away all day long. And it's to protect their harem of females, isn't it? That means many females to one male. Now, Dom just has the two girlfriends. I can assure you that's plenty enough for him. I'm not sure he'd cope with any more. But in the wild, the males could have anywhere between 20 to 30 girlfriends to look after. Now, to do that, what they've got to do, yes, that is your son. No, that's your girlfriend. That's your son over there. Dom, he's going to get distracted by them because they've chosen to hang out over here. So we'll just, we'll wing it, won't we, Dom? So during that breeding season, as I say, they'll have lots of girlfriends to look after. So when they haul out on land, they're going to rely on all that blubber that makes Dominic the size that he is. Basically, he's going to use that for his energy. If they're going to be successful in the wild, they won't go back to the water to eat. They can go one, even two months with that without any food whatsoever. Because if he took back to the water, another male is basically going to come along and steal his females. And the aim of the game for these guys is to be as big and as strong as they possibly can and to father as many pups as is physically possible. When they take back to the water, they roll it like a shadow of their former cells. So they've lost a lot of that blubber that's kept them going throughout that period. Um, so they have to try and warm up, especially during, as autumn and winter approaches. They'll use a technique known as thermoregulation. But what Dom thinks he's doing is a rather fabulous shark impression. So what they do is pop their flippers out of the water. And because there's little to no blubber on those small flippers, that warm air will penetrate through, warm up their blood vessels, and send that nice warm blood good blood back to their core enable them to regulate their body temperature. And then they're going to have to go and do some hunting because they're going to be very hungry. Dom isn't very hungry right now. But basically what they'll do is go hunting. These guys are one of the most successful marine predators out there. They're very well adapted to hunting. Uh, their eyesight's very good, but what they're going to rely on mostly are these beautiful whiskers you can see on the side of their face. They've got about 40 to 60 of them. They're known as vibrissae. Eh? If anybody has a cat at home, they've got exactly the same. Granted, they're not going to use them in the water. Uh, but basically, they use these because they're touch sensitive, very, very sensitive. And when these guys dive to depths of around 270 meters, real deep down, obviously it's going to be very dark. So these whiskers are going to be used to pick up teeny tiny vibrations given off from the fish when they're swimming. And then when they get closer, uh, vibrations get quicker, they know they're getting closer, and they'll snap them up with their ridiculously sharp teeth. Their teeth aren't very large, but they are extremely sharp, and they use them like a spear. You may notice as we're feeding them, or not, um, they don't chew their food, they just swallow it whole, um, and basically eat like a gannet. Now, they'll be having a fabulous time hunting around, won't we, Dom? But when they hunt, they can cause quite a commotion, and that can attract the attention of unwanted predators. These two get predated on, so... Typically in the wild, they're going to be hunted by the largest predatory fish we have in our oceans right now, the great white shark. But they will also be hunted by orcas. And if you've got any of those on your flippers, you're going to have to make a swim for it. So, they adapt a technique known as pause And what he's doing now is trying to make himself as streamlined as possible, almost torpedo shaped. So that every time he exits the water, the air's going to offer him less resistance. So he can increase his distance and increase his speed, reach the 
speeds of around 25 kilometers per hour. So not only are they one of the most successful of marine predators, they're also one of the fastest. And what they're gonna try and do is get to land, because let's face it, that's where we're all pretty safe on great white sharks, isn't it, Don? Thank goodness. But if land isn't in sight, what they're gonna have to do is adapt a different technique. And what they're gonna do is confuse their predators. Simply all they do is leap out of the water to try and create a massive splash. And in doing so, they get out of the eye line of the shark, good oh, lad, and they get to swim away, hopefully safe to swim another day. I think he did a pretty fab job. You'll see it in documentaries. Basically, they're just going to try and find any way to get away, because obviously they don't want to get eaten. And I think he did a fab job. I think he'd be all right. Thank you. Now, there's some other fabulous animals that share our oceans. These guys will often get confused with them. Um, and they're known as seals. They too will try and get away, but they're just not as great as these guys are getting away. And why is that? It's because of the length of their foreflippers. These ridiculously long, very powerful foreflippers enable them to propel themselves out of the water. They're using them when they're doing the porpoising. Um, and if you're a seal, your foreflippers are going to be about as big as your hand in relation to your body. And seals actually use their foreflippers to maneuver around, and their hind flippers, much like a fish would do to gain momentum. Now again, these four flippers are going to come in handy when they're trying to get away from their predators. As I mentioned, they'll do backflips, they'll also leap out of the water, um, and they do like a big old butterfly kind of somersault things. And what else do we do? We leap out, we try to confuse our predators again. Seals can do this, but never as good as dogs and blood. And they create another big massive splash, and that purely was because of those massive long four flippers. So if you don't know which one you're looking at, look at the certain length of their four flippers. If they're very, very long, you're looking at a sea lion, if they're a little short and stumpy things so attached to a big pack on you, you're probably looking at a seal. Now another thing to look out for, if you are still confused, is on the side of their very beautiful heads. Look at those little ears, aren't they lovely kids? Okay. So, a, a sea lions, they have external ears on the side of their head, you'll notice it on every single one of these. Um, if you're looking at a seal, you're not going to notice them, they literally have a slot either side of their head that they'll open and close as they exit and enter the water. Then another thing to look out for, finally, to help you tell the difference between the two so that Dom doesn't get offended when you call him a seal, is how they move on land. Earlier Dom walked around with ease and had to hand on was wearing it. Did you call him now? He has. Cool. The way to look for it, if you're looking at a seal, they move around like a big fat seal. They do not have the same agility as our guys have on land. And that's because they don't have a rotating hip joint. Our guys do. It means they can tuck their hind flippers underneath them um, and basically walk around. They'll walk just as fast as we can. They're very, very fast on land. Seals are much more vulnerable. So you did a pretty good job of that, didn't you? I can't believe you're even still here with me. This is a miracle. Isn't it, Dominic? Yes. So, another thing, what has happened in our ocean? It's like just lovely. He's got a little face and I'm just going, I'm just quite happy just to be stroked. Thank you. You're doing a fat job, Dominic, aren't you? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, big fat fish coming with the face, marvellous. So, oceans, let's stick with it and see if Dom will do something else. There are some other things on our oceans. Unfortunately, it's man made and it is causing a major problem. Well, we do have one, marvellous. I just don't know if there's actually a little in there. As it stands at the moment, uh, our oceans are fabulous places. They cover over 70% of the Earth's surface. But within those oceans, it's estimated uh, there are 3.5 trillion fish, Dom. Is that good? <coughs> yes, it's good, thank you. Uh, but unfortunately, all of those fish are facing the same problem, and the problem is plastics, isn't it, Dom? For every one piece of plastic in our ocean right now, it's estimated there are three fish. By 2050, there's predicted oh, there to be me. more plastic in our ocean than fish by 2050, guys. Yes, you did a good job, you did. Yes, you did. Well done, good lad. So, more plastic than fish by 2050. Absolutely crazy. So all we're asking you to do, if Dawn can learn to recycle, guys, especially kiddies, you can do it too. Pop your plastics in the right bin, because we use around 40 million single-use plastic bottles every day right here in the UK, and less than half are getting recycled. Worldwide, we're purchasing a million single-use plastic bottles every minute. That is absolute madness, because they don't disappear. They never disappear. They degrade, but they filter down into teeny tiny microplastics, and they've been found in the deepest parts of our oceans, places where humans can't even survive, plastic's there. So please, have a think about what you're using. If you can avoid it, do it. If you don't need a plastic straw, don't have it. But if you can use reusable things, even better. If not, recycle. Pop it in the right bin and you quite literally can help us save our oceans one tiny piece of plastic at a time. Because they are fabulous creatures. They're all suffering out there. These guys are marine mammals. 
uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think, but unfortunately, about 100,000 of them die every single year as a result of some form of contact with plastic in our ocean. So, Don's like, I don't want to do it. If I see a net in the ocean, let's not get tangled up in it. He's saying to me, I've done enough. But yes, unfortunately, they do. They have many different problems. Don't we go? Oh, what happens in the ocean? What happens? It's like, not a lot, just people floating around like a post. Marvellous, but in the oceans, they suffer when they ingest the plastic, they get entangled in it, and it has fatal consequences, doesn't it, Dominic? Does it? Yeah, it does, without the net. It does, doesn't it? So what do you have to do? Please, just have a think about the stuff you're using, guys. Dom has hinted to me, he's had enough, he just wants to play. So what we're going to do is end on a nice little fun bit for Dominic. Because Dom has done a fabulous job, I think. But Dom's favourite thing is high energy behaviours. He loves the ball jumps, he loves the backflips, he's having a good lad. Um, he likes playing, basically. So that's what we're going to let them do. Because all of our sea lions here have a choice. So that's the most important thing, isn't it, Dominic? You absolutely do not have to do anything that I ask you to do. And he knows it. He's going to get his breakfast, lunch or dinner, whether he works with me or not. But in between, we give you lots of opportunities. He doesn't want to do anything now. Give them lots of opportunities to have fun, to stimulate their minds. They're obviously captive animals, they're never going to use them like they would in the wild. So we have to do lots of high energy behaviors. Unbelievable. I was about to send him for a speech spin, which means he flies across the water like that to the blue target. So he decided just to just meander up there and touch it. But whatever. If you're having fun, I don't mind. So, interesting, Dominic. What we'll do is we're going to turn on the wave machines. Because as I said, we have to keep them mentally and physically stimulated. We do lots of high energy behaviours with them. We do all our training, basically, to make sure we can keep them nice and healthy. We do husbandry checks, they're at train to lie down. Dog is in the process of allowing us to draw blood from him. All pretty exceptional stuff. We do full body x-rays, dental x-rays, simple eye drops, stuff like that. And it's to prepare them that if they ever get poorly, we can intervene without causing them any stress. But in between that, we have to do the fun stuff, which is our favourite. So we create toys every day. We can stuff a load of fish in a bucket or a bottle if they want them. They're marvellous. Um, I basically get them to work for their food a lot of the time. They don't always just want it thrown at their heads, unlike Don maybe today. Um, but basically, we just try and create fun for them. We absolutely love playtime here. Um, and then we just let them be sea lions. <laughs> and that's what they do best. So with this wave machine that we had installed a couple of years ago, um, basically all it does is drag a ridiculously strong current into our pools. But it means if we scatter a load of fishes in, we can just tap into the nice little sea lions that they are. The fish get swirled up in the current, and then they've got to use all their fabulous adaptations uh, to hunt for their fish, and it simulates how the fish swim in the wild. So when Jane comes back, I'll steal some of her fish, because I've been too fish happy, and give it all away. But what I'm going to do is end it there, because Don's hinted to me, he is done. The fact that you even saw him out of the pool, I promise you, is a miracle today. Seeing as he's totally in love, they're about to give birth, and we're all like, what's going on situation? Aren't we, Dominic? So I do want to thank you. I appreciate it's been a shorter, sweeter kind of uh, uh, demo. Thank you for taking the time to come and watch it. Please maybe remember these beautiful little faces in our pool the next time you pick up a plastic straw or a plastic bottle, guys. If you don't need it, please don't use it. And if you do, just pop it in the right bin. Don can do it, Lara can do it, Bailey can do it, we can all do it. Um, and like I said earlier, you literally can help us save our oceans one piece of plastic at a time. So thank you for me for coming down to take the time to check out these guys. Thank you for taking the time to even come to the zoo today and all the pennies you spent will help all the fabulous animals out there that Zenith and are working so closely with. Enjoy your afternoon and have a fabulous day, guys. Thank you and goodbye.